I know this may be hard for most of us to actually accept, but here is the hardcore reality. This is you. Not what you see in the mirror, not what you're thinking, regardless, not even what your perception of yourself is. This is you. And it's this scientific fact. You can't show me anything other to prove your existence other than by this organ right here. Think about that. Take a look at it. That's you. Your whole existence, your entire foundation of your perception is because of this one single organ. And by definition, this is you. So from the moment we are born until the moment we step back out, we have this thing called the brain. And it's one thing that all of us have. Every person has it. In fact, it's very odd that it appears every living thing, plant, animal, human, has a brain. Without this, you simply don't exist. Take a good look. This is an active brain. This is you. You could actually define the electrical signal on every thought you have. It can be traced, it can be originated, and it can be destined. Drawn out. Amazing, isn't it? We all in the metaphysical community, in the religious community, in the scientific community, we all get so wrapped up around the axle so tight that it cuts the circulation off to this organ. Because in the end, in this realm, in this reality, that defines us, defines you. Without it, you do not exist. Neither do I. The formula is this. C equals M equals S. As I was contemplating this today, it occurred to me, what is memory? Well, without memory, you wouldn't have consciousness. So, Consciousness is really, you could say, is either the caboose or it could be potentially the engine. What we do know, that consciousness is dictated by what memory, and memory appears to be the soul. Because what is the soul? If it's the soul is not memory, then define for me what the soul is does? What's a capacity? Consciousness, intellect, intuition, logic, creativity, right, left. It goes all the way through. We've, we're still learning about this organ. And so we define consciousness by the fact that we can actually think. We have memories. Therefore, that gives us identity because that can prove to yourself that you actually exist. You see, others don't really care or know that you actually exist. And what I mean by that is that when it comes right down to it, they are as a much this struggle, and it is a struggle, about their own sense of identity. It's how it is. We now we love, we go through life, etc. But this is how we define consciousness. And so when you look at this, you can say, well, we have the physical, 
you know, this is what I can feel with my body, right? And that is where I can say I'm conscious, I'm alive, I have a body, I can speak, I can think, I can daydream. Pre-consciousness, feelings, thoughts, memories, touching awareness, subconscious, fear of loss, abandonment, drive of love, belonging, and then unconscious, deep archetypal drives that we unconditionally seek to actualize in life. We all struggle this with this sense of who we are, the essence of what we are. You know, you think about this. If I was to give you a, co a coordinate on the planet and said, imagine the person that lived here 9,000 years ago, well, you'd look at me like I was crazy. You've got no proof that that person lived there 9,000 years ago. Well, you can't prove that they didn't. But that person had a memory. Now, what happened to their memories? Because memory is, in fact, what defines you and me. Just plain and simple. Without memories, you have no identity. You have no sense of self-awareness. You have no sense of self-belonging. Without memory, you and I do not exist. Think about this. Can another person actually share your memories? No. They can live momentarily, vicariously, through your words, your imagery. But you can no more live their memories than they can live yours. We know how the anatomy of memory works. We know what actually motivates memory. We know how it functions. We can't tell you why, but we know the pieces that make it very well possible. And with memory, with consciousness, we can imagine places that cannot be seen, cannot be touched, cannot be heard, but they are as real as the ground that we walk upon. This is what consciousness allows us. And the memory then is absorbed by what most would define as the soul. And this is what expands our consciousness. It expands then our ability to memorize. Now, here becomes the challenge. What happens? when particularly the frontal cortex, that, that frontal lobal part, excuse me, of your brain becomes damaged or diseased. What happens when you no longer remember who you are? Do you exist? Are you existing there? There's no memories. The organ cannot find any memories. Think about this. Dementia, Alzheimer's, drugs, accidents. Once that front part is damaged, and particularly if it's diseased, whoever that was, if it's you, if that's your destiny, if you know someone, they're no longer there. Without memory, you no longer exist. I'll leave you with this. Do memories live and are they transferred? Are they transferred from what would be the spirit, the divine spark, the divinity, whatever that is about us that makes us unique and makes us these beings that have both a spirit and a body, and we struggle all of our lives to master both and find out we can neither control neither. 
And do memories, do they live? Do we transfer them? Is there some place that there's a repository that we can draw upon them again? I'll let you answer that question. Leave me your comments.